Este, más que nada yo quisiera darles un aviso a todos mis compañeros de trabajo que venemos aquí a Norte Carolina. More than anything, I would like to give a warning to all of my coworkers who come to work in North Carolina. We should utilize the protective equipment that our employers furnish. How would I explain it? It is good protection since it helps us avoid risks. Chemicals harm us. They harm everyone. So what we want to avoid are accidents and deaths. And most of all, we want to arrive back home to enjoy our families. País, con nuestras familias, disfrutar con ellos. Outreach training is a big part of the North Carolina Department of Labor's efforts to ensure workplace safety. The purpose of this video is to explain the requirements of the Hazard Communication Standard in simple terms so that you can apply the right procedures on your farm. We know that most growers and workers want to do the right thing, but may not know what the right thing is. This video will walk you through the requirements of Hazard Communication, also known as the HASCOM Standard, and help you understand the proper way to use and store agricultural chemicals. Should you have questions after viewing the video, please do not hesitate to contact the Agricultural Safety and Health Bureau for assistance. Thank you for making safety a priority on your farm. Employees have a right to know what chemicals are present or are likely to be used in their workplace. They need to know what hazards are associated with those chemicals and how they can protect themselves from these hazards. The Hazard Communication Program is derived from an occupational safety and health standard that applies to all employers in North Carolina. For employers in agriculture, it is enforced by the Agricultural Safety and Health Bureau of the North Carolina Department of Labor. A sample of this program can be viewed online at the North Carolina Department of Labor website. It requires employers to inform their employees of all hazards associated with chemicals in the workplace. Potential hazards must be reviewed with the employees so that they are understood. In agriculture, the standard applies to all those owning or operating migrant housing or to those who employ 11 or more workers during a calendar year. Chemicals are used in agricultural settings in a variety of ways. They are used to fuel farm equipment, perform maintenance activities, aid in the cleaning and processing of harvested crops, and most commonly in the growing process. Pesticides are the most common chemicals found on farms. Here in North Carolina, chemicals are used on a wide variety of crops, including tobacco, tomatoes, Christmas trees, peaches, cucumbers, melons, and other vegetable crops. The intent of the standard is to reduce the occurrence of chemical exposures, illnesses, injuries, and possible fatalities in the workplace. As an employer, you are obligated to inform your employees of the potential hazards involving chemicals used on the job, maintain a written hazard communication program, provide warning labels and material safety data sheets on each of these chemicals, and create and implement a training program that teaches your employees how to recognize and protect themselves from the various chemicals in the workplace. Your written hazard communication program for your farm will help you accomplish these obligations. One of the things that I'll ask you for today is your hazard communications program. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. That would be your, for example, your, um, the written program, the, the list of all of your chemicals. What should the written program include? An effective written program should contain a list of all hazardous chemicals in the workplace, including pesticides, the training methods you use, the hazards involved with performing work assignments, and the appropriate personal protective measures such as gloves, eyewear, protective clothing, or footwear. This written program must be available upon request to employees or their representatives and representatives of the North Carolina Department of Labor. It must provide the location of the material safety data sheets known as MSDSs. It must also include a description of the signal words found on labels. It must tell what to do if the MSDS or label is damaged or missing. It must have information on the safety training required. 
In addition, it must identify employees who are responsible for regulating any aspect of the program, such as label maintenance. If an on-site inspection is conducted, workers will be asked questions to see if they have been properly trained. Since the last time you were here, I got my material safety, safety data sheet book ready, and I've got it in Spanish so that our guys can perfect. find it. Mm -hmm. Having an actual notebook to compile all of this information works best. In your notebook, you should have a list of all hazardous chemicals in the workplace. As the chemicals you use change, you will need to update your inventory list and obtain new MSDSs. Your written plan must identify how the worker training will be done, who will do it, and when. It would be appropriate to keep a schedule showing which worker has received which training and when. Have the worker sign off on their training. The material safety data sheet is an important component of workplace safety and must be made readily available to workers in their work areas and to emergency personnel when needed. It includes information such as toxicity, health effects, first aid, storage, disposal, protective equipment needed, spill handling procedures, and effects on the environment. If you look at one, you will notice that it identifies the name of the chemical and active ingredients, what to do if you are exposed, and what personal protective equipment you should use when handling the chemical. It also identifies the first aid measures that are required in the event of exposure. Look for the signal words danger, warning, or caution. They will give you a good idea of how hazardous the product may be. Also, become familiar with the symbols that indicate the chemical's class, such as flammable, corrosive, poison, or reactive, and the common routes of entry, such as inhalation, ingestion, or absorption. Know the hazards associated with each of these classes and the ways in which the chemical can enter the body. You can find the MSDS on the web if you have access to a computer or get them free of charge from the agricultural supply company where you purchase the chemical. The MSDSs must be manufacturer specific. Different manufacturers have different formulations and in some cases carry different hazard warnings. As your inventory changes, your notebook will change. Would we need an MSDS sheet for a consumer product that you can actually purchase in a grocery store? That's an excellent question. We get that question a lot. In order for a consumer product to be exempt from the standard, it must be defined as such under the Consumer Products Safety Act. It must be used in the workplace as intended by the manufacturer and used with the same frequency and duration of exposure expected of a typical consumer. Propane, which most farms use in forklifts, must be included in the HAZCOM program. Also include other compressed gases such as oxygen and acetylene used in welding. If you are storing gasoline on your farm to fuel equipment, it needs to be part of the program. These fuels present physical hazards such as fire and explosion and health hazards such as carbon monoxide poisoning. It's essential that workers understand these hazards. Do not underestimate the hazards of using pesticides, especially when using backpack sprayers or hand applying the product. Pay attention to the protective equipment required by the pesticide MSDS. Some pesticides require more protective equipment than others, depending on their toxicity. It is the responsibility of the farmer to explain the hazards of a pesticide or chemical and to provide the correct personal protective equipment for its use. All right, guys, what we're going to be using today is FluPro. We're going to drop nozzle this with a high boy. We'll use eight workers. We've got the warning label right here that tells you what you need to know about it, but you need to wear these gloves the whole time that you're using the drop nozzle lines. Ah, okay, este, muchachos, aquí el patrón nos va este, uh... Your employer is obligated to provide all of the equipment necessary at no cost to us. The equipment is to be used at all times when we are going to apply the liquid or chemical that will be used in the field. It is the obligation of your employer to provide water, soap, and paper towels, and an MSDS, which contains the information of all the chemicals that are being applied on the tobacco.
In the worker protection standard, there is a section within the agricultural use requirement box called the REI, which is Restricted Entry Interval. And it requires that the grower tell the workers of the length of time before they can go in the field. Sometimes the label requires that they're orally informed and also they use this sign and it's posted at the field. Keep in mind that the label will always tell you whether you need to orally tell workers or post the field or do both. Although not a specific requirement of HASCOM, this EPA worker protection requirement is an important step in informing the workers about the hazards associated with pesticides. Your employer is required to advise employees by using these signs or verbally about the products being used in the fields so that workers will not enter. They will tell us the duration if it's 24 or 48 hours before re-entering depending on the product being applied. With training, workers need to learn the location of the written HASCOM program, which includes the list of hazardous chemicals and the material safety data sheets. Workers need to understand the signal words found on chemical warning labels and other information found on labels and MSDSs. They need to learn the specific hazards associated with each chemical and techniques for detecting chemical releases, such as the presence of carbon monoxide. Employers must provide a safety shower and eye wash where it is required by the MSDS and label. It is important that employees are familiar with the location of these emergency facilities and how to use them. They need to learn proper work practices and the proper use of personal protective equipment. Emergency and first aid procedures should be taught. Additionally, with the introduction of a new hazard in the workplace, new training must be given. Refresher training courses are recommended on an as-needed basis. Keep a record of the training that occurs in the hazard communication notebook. List who has been trained and when. As an employee, you have a responsibility to attend these training sessions. Pay attention to the requirements of the chemical labels and MSDSs. Use the appropriate protective clothing provided by your employer. Never assume that the content of an unlabeled container is harmless. Don't mix common ingredients such as bleach and ammonia. The result can be toxic. Inform your supervisor and seek medical attention if you or someone else becomes ill. Call 911 for emergency medical help. If you have questions about any aspect of your training or work, it is important to ask them. There are no bad or silly questions when it comes to your safety. Listen now to some of the questions that these workers had. ¿Qué pasaría? ¿Qué nos, qué nos podría pasar si no usamos el equipo? El equipo correcto. My first question would be, what would happen if we were to apply an insecticide and we didn't put on the correct equipment? What would happen? Could one become seriously ill or die? Another question about chemicals is what would happen? Could injury be permanent? Or in the case that one couldn't work, do they go back to Mexico? Or in a hospital? I don't know. Well, the question is, when one is applying insecticides or chemicals, is it necessary to use the protective equipment if it is hot or if it is cold? When we think about the chemical hazards, we think usually of acute or chronic poisoning from chemicals. Acute are usually the short-term effects that occur within a few minutes to a few hours. Uh, and we usually think of those as an acute poisons, either from ingestion, inhalation, or skin exposure. Well, again, the symptoms will vary by the type of pesticides. You may see a lot of tearing, a lot of watering in the mouth, even potentially frothing if it's really bad. Uh, they may develop shortness of breath. Uh, some may complain of muscle aches, uh, weakness, uh, diarrhea, vomiting. These are your common symptoms. Well, if they thought they were exposed, you need to decontaminate yourself immediately, which means washing off, you know, changing your clothes, washing off. Uh, if you still have symptoms, you should uh, seek medical attention. We suggest you bring in the pesticide label or material safety data sheet 
that the farmer or the farmer can get and bring it in. That helps the physician who's treating the patient, you know, find out exactly what the pesticide was used. And we can call the poison control centers and, and uh, get more detailed information on how we can treat a patient who is exposed. And again, I would say uh, be careful when you're around your family. Make sure you know you launder your clothes separately and uh, you don't contact your other household members without first making sure you've washed yourself. The regulations pertaining to the hazard communication standard that we've discussed in this video are meant to protect those who work on North Carolina's farms. By creating your own hazard communication program, you are taking the first step.